Hey guys, welcome to another Elvistory video. So this time I'm going to talk to you guys about uh, someone who is very, very important in Elvis Presley history. Maybe um, the most important person in Elvis Presley history when you think about it. And that would be Marion Keisker. Now, uh, as always, for the younger Elvis fans who don't know who Marion Keisker is, um, when Elvis first uh, recorded himself on July 18th, uh, 1953, um, he went into what was called uh, Memphis Recording at the time. And it was also in the same building, it was uh, Sun Records. So Elvis went into uh, Memphis recording one day on, I think he was on his lunch break from work when he was working for Crown Electric. And he went in there to, uh, now there's stories saying he recorded um, the song My Happiness for his mom. But then there's other stories saying he just recorded to hear himself. Um, that may be a topic for another day, but in any event, he went into uh, Memphis Recording, which is what it was called, to record himself. And the person that was there was Marion Keisker. And um, Sam Phillips, who owned uh, Sun Records, I believe he was there at the time, but he was busy doing other things so uh marion had to um help elvis to record so as the story goes she asked elvis you know who do you sound like and he said ma'am i don't sound like nobody and so that day elvis record he recorded uh two two songs uh my happiness and that's when your heartache begins. My recollection is that it was a Saturday. That it may or may not have been. The reason I think it was a Saturday because I was there and not rushing off to, to do my daily program at, at WREC. I know that it was, a, it was very, very hot in the studio. There was no air conditioning unit out in the front part of the office. The, air the money for the air conditioners had to go for the studio and for the recording equipment. So it was very, very hot out there. In the earlier accounts of this, there was a little gap of something that I didn't remember. And later Sam's brother Judd reminded me of what had actually happened. And it was that while I was setting up to record the record, Sam Judd and Jim Bullitt, who was Sam's partner at the time, came out of the back of the studio where they'd been having a conference and went through the control room. And I remember turning to Sam and saying, do you want to do this? And he said very abruptly, having his mind on other things, can't you see I'm busy? And went out and they went next door to Miss Taylor's to have a quick cup of coffee. Finally, um, I decided that I, um, would go and make the record myself. So I thought, oh, I want Sam to hear this. Sam's been saying he wanted to find a white man who sounded black, and, and I, I felt that's what was happening here. Actually, something more than that was happening, but that's what I heard, that he sounded black to me. So I looked around wildly for somewhere, and there was an old paper tape that was lying there, and I, while I was still making the record I reached out with one hand and picked up the tape and put it on and turned it on so that it would record simultaneously I guess I was finishing I was out front typing up the label which I did on paste it on there on the thing. and um, when Sam came back I'm not sure whether he and he went to the back and I told him I wanted to, to listen to this. I'm not sure whether he, I had left the disc on there while I was waiting to label it and he may have played part of the disc or whether he played the tape. Uh, in any case, he did listen to a portion of it. And um, he said, uh, well, yeah, he, he, you know, he has potential, but we're too busy. So I wrote down on a little slip of paper, Elvis Presley, good ballad singer, 
and a telephone number where he could reach and wrote save on it and I put it under my desk blotter. The time went by, I don't know how much time when you're working on those conditions, time doesn't mean anything, you don't know you're making history, you're not making hourly notes, you know. Uh, time went by and I came in from my doing my show and Sam was there and there was a note stuck on the spindle and it said Elvis Presley had a telephone number, good ballad singer, save, and I said, I went back, I said, did that kid with the sideburns come in here again? And he said, well, uh, uh, that, that, that fellow's his name, yeah. And even at the time, he didn't seem, Sam didn't seem to have any recollection of the earlier incident, which now he has said really didn't happen. Well, even at the time, he, he didn't remember. So th on this occasion, which I recall as the second occasion that Elvis was in there to make another record, uh, Sam and Elvis were alone in the studio because I was out doing my daily thing at the radio station. Uh, as far as who gets the credit, if you will, or as far as who did what, that's the sequence as I remember it. And actually, the breakthrough for Elvis and for all of those who, the things that happened it was one very rainy Saturday afternoon when just Sam and I were there and Sam decided to tackle a huge stack of demo records that various persons had sent in and immediately I said, what about the kid with the sideburns? <laughs> and Sam said, oh yeah, he might, but I don't, I don't remember his name, I don't know how to get in touch with him. And I said, picking up my blotter, I do. And so, now, digging a little deeper on who Marion Keisker was, um, I'm going to give you guys, uh, I'm going to read you guys a brief history because there's more um, details about Marion than I think most people know about. So not only did I want to do this video because she's so super important to Elvis Presley history, um, she was just, I think, a really uh, amazing woman on top of it. So I'm going to read you guys this uh, little detailed history of uh, how Marion got started in the business and a few other things that she did um, during her life. So Marion was a native uh, Memphian just like Elvis, born there on September 23rd, 1917. She made her radio debut in 1929 at the age of 12, appearing on WREC's weekly children's hour, Winkin', Blinkin' and Nod. She graduated from Southwest, Southwestern College, majoring in English and Medieval French. Uh, Marion got married in 1939 and moved to Illinois where she lived until she got divorced in 1943. She and her son moved back to Memphis and she got a secretarial job. Uh, by 1946, she joined, she joined radio station WREC where she became a popular radio personality with her own daily Kitty Kelly talk show. She, she also wrote and produced and directed 14 other programs as well. So not only did Marion have her own show at this radio station, she uh, directed 14 other programs as well. I mean, this, this is something about, um, I mean, because we just hear about Marion Keiska. You, you just know she's the lady that uh, recorded Elvis, you know, so... Um, but these are the things that I find like really interesting about her. Um, and it, it was at WREC that Marion met uh, Sam Phillips, who owned Sun Records. They worked closely together, broadcasting big bands from the Peabody Hotel Skyway Room. Marion also helped Sam set up and operate his own recording studio on Union Avenue, 706 Union Avenue to be exact. Um, they did all the work themselves, laying the tile, painting the acoustic boards, and setting up the limited amount of equipment Sam had. Um, the studio name, the Memphis Recording Service, opened in January of 1950 with Marion 
working as office manager while still working part-time at WREC to make ends meet. Uh, Marion was the organizer while Sam was the creative force. Uh, she, she kept track of the musicians and con contacted them for sessions. She kept a log of the sessions, paid the musicians, and was contact person for the pressing plants and distributors. Wow. It was Marion who first laid eyes on Elvis Presley as he came shyly in the door on July 18th, 1953, looking to self-record his voice for the very first time. Um, she said there was something about this boy that both me and Sam recognized. She, she wrote next to his name after Elvis was done uh, recording. Mary made a mental, uh, she actually wrote down on paper um, good ballad singer and she also wrote on this piece of paper hold and she put it away so in case you know they wanted to get in touch with him later on because Marion saw something in Elvis at that point when he started recording she was basically like blown away you know by 1955 Marion resigned from WREC and helped Sam Phillips to develop his idea of an all-girl radio station, WHER, 1,000 Beautiful Watts. Uh, it started its 17-year run on October 29, 1955. It was the first all-girl radio station in the world. All the announcers, sales staff, management, record librarians, copywriters, all the jobs were done by women. Wow. Marion and Sam's relationship ended in 1957 and Marion joined the U.S. Air Force. Elvis hadn't seen her since then when he looked up at his March 1st, 19... Now this was the, uh, if you guys remember, Elvis had the March 1st, 1960 uh, coming home from the Army press conference. When he was at this press conference, um, he looked up and he spotted then Captain Marion Keisker McInnes, who was her married name. And she was also stationed in Germany. Elvis told her, I don't know whether to kiss you or salute you. And Marion responded in that order. <laughs> and actually when this happened, when um, at this press conference, when Elvis spotted Marion, and he went over to her and he said all these things. Um, Marion actually got uh, not in trouble, but reprimanded by um, one of the higher ups that was there. And Elvis turned around and defended her to to this higher up that was in the uh, in the military also. And he said, "Hey, listen." We wouldn't be having this press conference if it wasn't for this lady right here. So how cool is that that Elvis did that? So, but, and then again in 1971 at the uh, JC's award, Marion Keisker was there also because she had heard um, Elvis was being awarded as one of the 10 most outstanding young men in America when he received the JC's award. Uh, it was at this luncheon in Memphis honoring the US JC's 10 outstanding young men of America of 1970, uh, one of several activities leading up to an evening awards banquet. Uh, this time when he saw Marion, he grabbed her and took her to his table and introduced Marion to his wife Priscilla, his then wife Priscilla, uh, and the rest of the guys that were with him. And he told everybody, um, if it wasn't for this lady, I wouldn't even be here today. So, that, um, Basically, in a nutshell, was um, 
also Marion Marion was responsible she was a co-founder uh, a co-founder and president of the Memphis chapter of the National Organization of Women she fought to change the classified ads in the local newspapers so jobs would not be separated by gender Wow uh, Marion was a member of the women's media group where she fought discrimination against women in the media um, in the 1970s and 1980s she was known for her broadcasting and theater work in Memphis Marion frequently wrote letters to the editor to address issues of discrimination against women. Uh, so, I don't know if you guys knew all these things before, but to me, um, after reading all these things about Marion Keisker, now, to me, she's just more than, more than just the woman who happened to be there that day when Elvis came in to record himself. Um, she's just, she's more than that person that just, you know, hit the record button. There was, you know, she was, she was a good, good, tough lady. I mean, you know, she, she was, a, uh, obviously I did not know she was a, a strong advocate for equal rights for women. And she did a lot for that as well and and she honorably served in the air force and i did not know about that either um i actually recently found out about that and so it's just funny too how uh her and elvis's paths crossed in like two different uh times in elvis's life two big two big points in his life his time in the military and the time when he first started out, you know, he crossed paths with Marion Keisker. Um, once again, is it a coincidence? I don't think so. Because this, wo this woman was, you know, super important uh, to Elvis. I mean, when you stop and think about it, yeah, Sam Phillips recorded uh, That's All Right, Mama. And that's the record that got played, you know, 30 times by Dewey Phillips and you know that's just that's the record that blew up for him but um, had Marion not written down when Elvis came in originally in 1953 had Marion not made a you know a mental note to write this down that you know this boy's good basically and she wrote Elvis's phone number because she had a feeling that, you know, he was going to be something really good. And, you know, lo and behold, a year later, you know, uh, Sam was, that's when Sam was looking for somebody. And now the rest of history goes, I think you guys know, they brought him in to record a song called Without You. But that didn't quite work out as well. And at the time, Scotty Moore was looking for somebody because he was starting a new band. And Sam, you know, actually was working with Elvis at the time. So that's why he hooked up, Sam hooked up Elvis with Scotty Moore. Because uh, Sam, I think, liked Elvis, but he felt like he didn't have enough behind him. And that's where uh, he gave Scotty Moore Elvis's phone number. And that's when uh, Scotty called Elvis and, you know, Scotty tried him out with Bill Black. They went into Sun Studio and the rest was history. But, um, yeah, like I said, I, I, you know, if you have to stop and think now, because um, a year went by between him first recording in 1953 to them actually calling him in 54. It wasn't like a, a, like a few days later that they called him. A whole year went by, you know. So now if Marion, the year before, if she did not write down what she thought about Elvis, how good she thought he was, and his phone number, had she not written that down, you know, 
would there have been an Elvis Presley? You know, that's something to really think about. This is why I say Marion Keisker is probably the most important person in the history of the career of Elvis Presley. Because, yeah, a year later, Sam could have been looking for somebody. Now, you know, Marion could have been like, oh, well, there was that kid that came in a year ago, but I didn't write anything down and we can't get in touch with him. And that's that. You know what I mean? It could have ended like that. But, you know, she was smart enough to do that. That's why Elvis even said when he saw her at the JCs in 71 and he introduced her to Priscilla and the rest of the guys. That's why he said, you know, if it wasn't for this woman right here, you know, I wouldn't be here today accepting this award. I wouldn't have any of this. And Elvis, you know, he was smart enough to know that, you know. So, all right, guys, I just wanted to give you a, a deeper insight as to who uh, Marion Keisker was and basically my opinion why I thought she's probably the most important person in Elvis Presley uh, career history. Okay. All right, guys. Thank you so much for watching the video. Thank you so much for subscribing and for all your support. And please give this video a like when you're done if you like the video. Okay. I hope you all are doing great. Thanks for watching again. And as always, TCB and God bless.